Okay, here's the, uh, the Summer Triangle. Uh, it's like the constellation of Summer Triangle, but um, this is the, the triangle that's uh, I've connected the dots for the locations where the source of the light blips come out. These spots here. So as we were flying through this area, um, this is where the best I can make out these these lines uh, lights were headed to, kind of toward us. But so once I started plotting this out on Google Earth here, it looked like there was kind of a maybe a pattern here where if we extended these lines here out, um, they kind of intersect in a spot right here. This one from the source here is going there. And if we continued it on, and they could possibly continue on. It dawned on me that, you know, we see them coming through hills and going through rock and stuff that maybe this is going to this common point here. Maybe this one here that we saw over here is actually continuing to this spot. How far do they go? Uh, we need to figure that out uh, by recording more of this activity here, I guess. But maybe this is a... Uh, so these these flashes, if something flies in here with a transponder that picks up that signal and then this thing activates and these things start coming out in this pattern here, kind of pulsing maybe. I'm not sure, that's just a wild guess, but... Um, and another cool thing is the uh, the central point is the nose of Knut and Amun-Ra, the ram's head, and the Wasceptor nose. So, is that a connection? Is that the real smoking gun of the ETs to the Egyptian deities, the Egyptian gods? The Wasceptor here looks kind of like a xenomorph alien head um, from this point from the nose here if we extend this line out down the center of it is the summer solstice sunrise orientation um, so that's kind of neat too so it's uh, the solstices were a big thing for the egyptians here's hather is right here next to it and it's i have shown before that she is the center point kind of the uh, intersecting point for the summer solstice sunrise across this sun disk that appears uh, at the end of this truncated mountain right here cut, cut across also to the summer solstice sunset which heads through Isis and Sekhmet or Miner's Needle and Reaver's Needle so that's why I think that this formation was was picked out and given a name is that of that point an important point but again is this uh, what is this some, some kind of mechanism that some, uh, protects this area or um, still don't know what to make of it is this the real smoking gun that ETs are tied to the Egyptian gods so discussing the um, Egyptian symbols and deities. The Wasp Scepter is kind of an odd thing. It's a staff um, that gods are depicted with it, holding it. Uh, pharaohs are, and it um, it's it's this odd-looking head, a long head with a here's the the spine of the Apis bull, but also the Wasp Scepter with the forks fork at the end of the tail or the staff. <clears throat> Same thing as what uh, uh, I believe is Quetzalcoatl is the serpent with uh, the man's a man's head in his mouth. Here's where the um, energetic formation is. Uh, so let's um, the ape spine or the uh, tailbone of the apis bull as well. That's where all that kundalini starts at your tailbone and goes up. So maybe that's where that came from. But anyways, the the wasp scepter um, it's definitely got some interesting uh, qualities. It's, um, stylized animal head is what Egyptologists know with a forked end. 
So here's a lost scepter with this odd long head of some kind of animal. They're not sure what it is, but I say it's this geological formation here at the Sacred Valley here. But um, it's associated with the deities of Set and Anubis, and we can see that here as well. Here's Set, the Set animal. Here's his eye. Here's his snout. There's two big ears at the back of his head, just like it's depicted. Anubis is right here, so of course these are right here uh, touching the Lost Scepter, that's why it's associated with it. Um, other interesting tidbits, uh, the Lost Scepter is also uh, represents the said animal, or Kanum, which is the, uh, the ram head as well. Not only is Amun Ra the ram's head, but so is Kanum. Which is interesting. Um, is a symbol of, of control over the force of chaos that Seth represented. So how can that be a, a, a control over the force of chaos? Was someone told that that's what that does this area does um, they're used as amulets for protection the symbol of the of the fourth upper Egyptian gnome uh, the gnome of Thebes <clears throat> so many times you see the, the pharaohs of the gods holding this here It's also uh, uh, the first definition is it means power or dominion, and then dominion is also not um, defined as dominate necessarily, but stewardship. So the the gods that hold this thing are the stewards of nature, or the pharaohs are just considered the stewards of nature. Who gave? this definition to this Wasp Scepter. We go back to this here, the ETs. Did the ETs do that? Did the ETs create all these deities for mankind to have uh, kind of order? You know, it's human nature uh, to do, to play well with others when uh, if there's an authority over, watching over you. It's been shown with children and rooms uh, that if they know that there's a camera watching them, they behave, and if there's none, nothing watching them, they do what they want. So it may be an ET construct to for civilization to, to form. Now, is this the smoking gun here of the ET connection to the ancient aliens uh, theory? Uh, does it prove the ancient alien theory that uh, this is the ancient civilizations, Egyptians, were um, uh, inspired by the ETs, or where did they get their information? So it looks like this, with this triangle shape here, in the center, if you continue these lines of the light blips, this orients right here, and it's not quite the center of the triangle. That'd be over this area a little bit. This is like five miles. This is almost four or something like that. And so, but it does go right here to the center. Center points the nose of the ram and the lost scepter, which is kind of interesting. So here's that, where I set that one day and tried to meditate right here, but I uh, just couldn't because it, I felt like I had to wash my back. It was just a strange feeling there, but I, so I didn't, didn't, couldn't meditate there. I'm not good at meditating anyways, but uh, sitting in that stream right there that day, meditating, that was right here. So this could be a magic spot here. It might be, this triangle could be influence of getting information out. Anytime there's a aircraft that flies in here that's got a transponder, it signals this thing that uh, to send out the signal. Maybe that's what those light lips are, is just information, a signal. 
on the quantum scale. So, with these going through mountains and everything, it's, there's something to this. Now, we don't have all the, um, the freaky stuff that uh, Skinwalker Ranch does, but we don't have as many people right back here either, watching them daily, at night, every night. So, the nearest ranch is a couple miles away from that. Um, so, stay tuned. We just need to do some more flights out here and, and get more data. It's, it's just too hot right now. It's record breaking heat in July of 2023. So, too dangerous to go out there. Stay tuned.